bad stoppage. I think that was a bad stoppage. Riggle was getting touched up, losing the fight, in my opinion, and fighting a style that I've never expected for him to fight. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. Sunday Night Boxing, June the 23rd, 2019, 8.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What was that? Uh, ninth round stop. It's the end of the eighth round. Very final seconds here. Big ass fucking hook. He needed it. Here, let me wind it back for you. Well, they're going to show it again. So, let's talk. Tonight, Sunday night, you have uh, Jamel Charlo taking on Jorge Cota. It was supposed to be Jamel Charlo versus Tony Harrison, but Tony Harrison has an injury. Guillermo Rigondeaux just defeated Julio Ceja in the fight where I'm going to say some rounds were close, but Rigo was losing the fight. He was getting touched up to the body. His legs seem, they look like they're gone. You know, he's listed at 38, but I see that he's 44. We've seen similar um, 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 fights with Iris Lindy Lara of late. We've learned or we're learning that, you know, this, you know, these Cuban fighters these days, they get older, you know, they fight more, their legs. And one thing I saw on uh, Twitter, too, that Breadman Boxing brought up is it is true that Cuban fighters, you know, don't really de develop like a, um, a sound right hook, like as a weapon. So now Rigo is going to move on to fight the winner of Ray Vargas and Tomoki Kameda that's taking place on uh, July the 13th for the WBC title at uh, 122 pounds. This was an eliminator. Julio Seha, you may have seen him fight Hugo Ruiz, who fought Javante Davis in his last fight. Notable fights against um, um, Anselmo Marino, also uh, Jimmy McDonald, which I covered years ago. You know, he's been around, but by far, this was the best performance of his career. And I'm interested to see the scorecards before the stoppage. Because knowing PBC on Fox, it, you know, it, it's just that, you know, cards haven't been good on their broadcast. From A-sides, not having the decision going their way, to B-sides, not having decisions going their way. I mean, look at Matt Vekorboff happened to him twice against um, Emmanuel Aleem and, um, and uh, Jamal Charlo, in my opinion. So let's do a little bit of a jump cut because they're still on commercial break. You know, we're going to listen to Rigondeaux's interview. And also, you know, here's the thing. We saw the stoppage right there. We're going to go back and watch it again. And in my opinion, you know, it was the end of the round two. I think he should have let him continue. But at the same time, I understand these days in boxing, man, you know, you want to look into a fighter's. I mean, I, I was looking at it. I was watching it. Here, they are actually back. We don't have to do a jump cut. So I do all my videos live real time. The few, the proud, the I ain't even get to do my little joint. He needed that KO badly. And it was and a shot, shot that he was been been doing all night. He, he's been that, that, throwing yeah. that. Look at these punch stats. This, he got glory with it in that last punch. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, he it, needed it. At least we know his power is there. Right. He kept his hands up real good. It's still there. A look at the, the number of power punches landed and thrown as we head to the ring for the. Decision. Good for you, Rigo. This was a very exciting fight. Let's listen in. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 59 seconds in round number 8. You think it was an early stoppage though? The contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is the winner of the WBC Super Bantamweight World Title Eliminator, the Jackal, Guillermo El Chaca Rigonde.
Guillermo. Guillermo. Joe Goosen said just before that he has to pull a rabbit out of his hat in order to win this right now. Well, you didn't pull a rabbit out of your head. It was a big left hand. I heard Ronnie Shields in the corner calling for it. Did you feel like you were down on the scorecards and needed to win this emphatically and decisively? Nuestro comentarista Joe Goosen dijo que tú tenías que sacar como un golpe de sorpresa debido a como que estaba perdiendo la pelea y todo eso. Y Ronnie Shields también que tenía que venir un golpe decisivo y fue una izquierda decisiva en ese en esta pelea. Bueno, todo fue cuestión de tiempo. Fueron pasando los rounds, hace tiempo que no peleo 12 rounds y quise trabajar un poquito en la médica de distancia ahí tranquilo. Y bueno, ya ustedes vieron, porque la gente dice que yo corro, que me monten la bicicleta. A ver qué van a decir ahora, no, parado ahí de cuero y candela. Well, people were saying, you know, the fights that I, you know, I might get on the bicycle, that I run a lot. Well, that's not true. You know, I showed today that I could fight at short distance. I did it, and that was the game plan. I wanted to get a couple of rounds in. I haven't fought 12 in a, in a while, but the, go, the left came and that ended the fight. Was certainly in close distance, that's for sure. Congratulations on a great win here. Kenny, we'll send it back over to you. All right, thanks, Heidi. Well, Joe predicted that Reagan Dow might look for the knockout in round eight, and that is exactly what we saw. The victory over Julio Ceja. The old master right there. He finished it. So um, let's talk about the 122-pound division. And where Rigo was going because things are going to get really, really interesting because they're on the same timeline. For example, this fight right here against these two are going to happen in um, um, a couple of weeks. You know, just over what? Uh, three weeks. Two weeks. Three weeks. So the timeline is, is, is there enough for, you know, Rigo to not fuck around, you know, and what if he didn't get the knockout tonight? Once again, I'm interested to see what the um, unofficial scorecards for were. In fact, let me do a jump cut real quick so I can get them. No, let's go through this, do this first. So, you have Danny Roman over on the zone, matchroom fighter, who's the WBA and IBF unified. Emmanuel Navarrete is over there at a top rank with the WBO. And right now, this is what Riga was targeting. Um, targeting. Ray Vargas currently right now is a golden boy fighter. Tomoki Kameda used to be an Al Heyman fighter. I'm wondering how they got this deal done. And since Rigo has won, would this have to go to purse bid to get the winner of this done? Or would Ray Vargas move up? I'm trying to figure out how this will, will work. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to figure this out. By the way, Shingo Waki. I haven't seen him fight in a while. And who did I see him fight? Who did I see him fight? What weird box rec? What is this? What is this? Why does box rec look like that? What in the world? Anyway, um, I'm T Street Controversy. Let me go see what the scorecards were. I'll be right back. Yeah, I couldn't find the uh, scorecards. Yep, fans are in agreement. It is uh, uh, on Twitter that it was a bad stoppage. Referee was um, Russell Moore, by the way. Uh, please subscribe. 